So President Joe Biden was already not doing too hot, but then Roe v. Wade was overturned and now his numbers have collapsed. And it's not just that voters overall net disapprove of his job performance, but his own base Democratic Party voters now do not want him to run for president in 2024, even though he insists that he will indeed be seeking a second term. Now, this new poll from the New York Times and Siena College that we're going to talk about demonstrates that if he chooses to go forward and actually run again, it will be a colossal disaster for Democrats, and he'll be essentially handing the keys to the White House to Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. As Shane Goldmacher explains, President Biden is facing an alarming level of doubt from inside his own party, with 64% of Democratic voters saying they would prefer a new standard bearer in the 2024 presidential campaign, according to a New York Times Siena College poll, as voters nationwide have soured on his leadership, giving him a meager 33% job approval rating. Jesus Christ. Only 13% of American voters said the nation was on the right track, the lowest point in Times polling since the depths of the financial crisis more than a decade ago. The backlash against Mr. Biden and desire to move in a new direction were particularly acute among younger voters. In the survey, 94% of Democrats under the age of 30 said they would prefer a different presidential nominee. I'm going to repeat that last sentence to you. In this survey, 94% of Democrats under the age of 30 said they would prefer a different presidential nominee. This is horrific. But is anyone really surprised by this? What has Joe Biden delivered for young people? I mean, think about the way that he has handled, or I should say mishandled, the student debt crisis. We keep hearing about how he's going to do something. Okay, well, it's not as big as we had hoped, but he's going to cancel $10,000. Oh, well, we're going to hear about that in two weeks. That time comes and goes. We still don't hear anything. He's just dragging us along, and we don't necessarily know what to do. It's like we're in a state of limbo, and it seems as if now we're getting indications that he's going to restart repayment of student loans because they were on pause due to the pandemic, which is still very much going on, by the way, and he's just... He's gone silent on it. And speaking of the pandemic, we have another wave thanks to a new Omicron variant, BA5, and he's just given up. So he's stopped being a president effectively. I mean, he tries to be a head of state in some ways and symbolically lead the country, but when it comes to governing, he's just MIA. He's just gone. And it gets worse when you consider the way that he responded to Roe. And we'll get to that in a second here, but I want to get to more from this poll. So two-thirds of independents disapprove. That is disaster when it comes to swing states. Uh, additionally, only 26% of Democratic voters want him to run for re-election. In other words, if he chooses to run and become the nominee again, um, I mean, with that much voters demoralized, they're not going to turn out. And if turnout is low, that means that Republicans will win. So if he chooses to run again unilaterally, he's just giving the White House to a Republican. If he cares about this country, he would put his ego aside and step down. OK, now, Democratic Party primary voters don't necessarily seem to have formed a consensus on who they want to run. If you look at some opinion polls from at least May, it showed Kamala Harris at top, but she's part of the Biden administration. So you would think that she wouldn't have that high of an approval. You see Michelle Obama. They're kind of all over the place, uh, all over the place. So I think that you have to see a robust primary take place. But that can't happen if Biden doesn't announce ahead of time that, hey, I'm not going to be running again. Because if he chooses to run again, um, then there's going to be no primary, obviously, because, I mean, primarying an incumbent president is next to impossible. But if he chooses to step down, he needs to make this announcement as quickly as possible. So that way, people who want to run for president ha have the opportunity to prepare. But I think he's actually going to run again. I, I mean, I have no idea. It's not guaranteed that at this point he keeps reiterating his intent to run. But if he does, I mean, truly, this is... A disaster. And I think that ultimately what it's going to come down to is whether or not the donors say hit the road because the Democratic Party doesn't listen to its own base. So if the donors say we're done, Biden, we're done, DNC, no more money unless you choose to kick him out. And it's not like you can kick him out, but he has to choose willingly to resign. But if the donors reach that point, then that's when I think that you're going to see him say, OK, 
changing gears a little bit, I will not be seeking a second term. Now, there's more. In an opinion piece for Salon, Amanda Marcotte, who I don't always agree with, actually had a really astute observation, in my opinion, and she talked about how there's this revolt within the Democratic Party due to his limp response to Roe v. Wade. Now, this is because Democrats are united on this particular issue. Both centrists and leftists have coalesced around this issue of abortion. They agree. There's no disagreement there. There's no Medicare for all versus public option. There's no free community college versus free all college. It's everyone agrees women should have the right to choose. So for you to not lead the charge as the leader of this party, that is a terrifying strategy or lack thereof. And Amanda Marcotte explains that this is why his approval rating has collapsed. Because if you see your party united on this particular issue, when there's been a lot of divisions, a civil war effectively going on in the, De in the Democratic Party, and it's still going on, to be clear. But when you see them all coalesce around this one issue and you don't use that as an opportunity to fight and galvanize your base and bring the party together, that is a failure of leadership. That is a failure of leadership. And Biden is proving that he can't meet the moment. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how Politico's Alex Thompson reported that, quote, Biden and officials are concerned that more radical moves would be politically polarizing ahead of November's midterm elections, undermine public trust in institutions like the Supreme Court or lack strong legal footing, sources inside and outside the White House say. So you have the totality of your base essentially screaming at you, do something. 84% of voters in your party say we strongly want women to have the right to an abortion. We strongly support Roe v. Wade. And that's just the strongly agree at 84%. There's other people who just simply agree. So like all Democrats essentially are in lockstep and Biden is just too afraid to do anything, literally. But it's deeper than that. He actually is insulting the people who are calling on him to take action. As the Daily Beast reports, Biden's administration is calling some pro-choice activists' views out of step with the party. Imagine saying this. So they write, the White House tried to defend President Joe Biden's seemingly drowsy response to the reversal of Roe v. Wade on Saturday, but instead sparked an instant backlash by labeling pro-choice activists, quote, out of step. The apparent jab was made in a statement to the Washington Post, responding to criticism of what many Democrats see as a response that has been too little too late. White House Communications director Kate Bedingfield said the president has been showing his deep outrage as an American and executing his bold plan. Yeah, right. Which is the product of months of hard work ever since this decision was handed down. She went on to say that Joe Biden's goal in responding to Dobbs is not to satisfy some activists who have been consistently out of step with the mainstream of the Democratic Party, but to deliver help to women who are in danger and assemble a broad based coalition to defend a woman's right to choose now, just as he assembled such a coalition to win in the 2020 campaign. Okay, they're not clear here, but comments like this are very obviously not helpful because again, the Democratic Party is unified on the issue of abortion. So what views are out of step with the public? I mean, there has been a variety of responses that people expect from Biden. Okay, you can pack the Supreme Court. You can reform the judiciary so that way there's term limits, so that way you curtail their ability to do judicial review or, you know, overturn precedent. You, you can do certain things, but if you don't want to do that, you can take executive actions to set up abortion clinics on federal land. But he's not really doing anything. The response that we've seen has been mealy mouth. And last week, he uh, he signed an executive order that comes far too late, and it's also meaningless because it doesn't really do anything to protect a woman's right to choose. So he's not even doing the bare minimum. And now his administration is resorting to insulting some abortion activists who are uh, apparently out of step. Who's out of step? Centrists and leftists aren't united on anything, but on the issue of abortion, they're united. Whether or not they like apple pie is probably more controversial, right? So for the Biden administration to bungle this, it just... It speaks to his incompetence and why people don't want him to run. So if he chooses to run after he's proven that he cannot meet this moment, I mean, he's selfish. He's selfish because he's choosing to give the keys to the White House over to whatever fascist the Republicans choose to nominate. And he's doing that because of his ego, because he refuses to step down. It's just genuinely shocking. And when you see so much dissatisfaction with younger people, and the Democratic Party at large not doing anything to try to bring them in. Rather, they keep trying to push them away. You just see why 
we're in such bad shape as a country. Because if you see the rise of fascism in the United States, an emboldened authoritarian Christian right, and you have an opposition party that isn't really doing anything and too afraid to act and insulting their own base, you set up the situation where democracy is on the decline. And that's where we find ourselves right now, unfortunately.